There we go. That's better. Now my mic is working. So I'm just going to take a moment and send a message on Facebook, which I closed for some reason, um, letting folks know that I'm live because they may not know. This was completely unplanned, and I know you can't really see anything happening on the screen. I am so sorry that my hands are not in there doing something at the moment, but I will be there shortly. Um, let's see. Let's go into the Rogue Stitches group.
change the batteries in my mic. I am so sorry. Um, it looks like it's working. I'm going to try to refer back. Can you guys hear me now? I'm going to try to keep looking over at OBS to make sure that my mic is still on. And if I see that it goes off again, perfect. Perfect. Hi, Jan. Hi, Mary Beth. Okay, so it looks like I needed to change the batteries. I'm going to go ahead and pop these on the charger just in case. You never know. I use a, a wireless um, mic so that I can move around the room a lot more easily while I'm working. So I need to find a spot where I can plug this in. I need a room with more outlets. That's what I need. <laughs> so batteries changed so we should be good to go for a bit um, I'm gonna unplug a light over here so that I can plug these in so I don't know what point my mic went dead um, I think I was talking about the fact that I don't use I haven't done any YouTube lives not in years years and years and years so um, I'm not sure how to get chat over here on my iPad so that I can see it on this side of the room. So I may, if my hands disappear for a moment, I'll be over on the other side of the room looking at chat. Um, and, you know, depending on how this goes and maybe, you know, maybe I'll do a few more to decide, you know, if I want to stream over here on YouTube more. 
rather than over on Twitch uh, because it's a little bit harder to get a foothold over there, uh, especially with it being predominantly gaming, though there is a very large creative community. So yeah, all right, I'm just gonna fold this in. Almost to the line. Making sure that everything stays nice and straight without pulling, um, pulling it because this does have a little bit of stretch to it. Not a lot, but I want to make sure that I'm folding straight in from the side to the center. So it may look like there's like little puckers, but those will press out with your fingers when you press everything down. I finally um, got a wider um, double-sided tape in stock so I don't have to clip and tape. <laughs> Although I still sometimes have to on really long straps when I'm using um, the really heavier uh, marine vinyls. So is there anybody here that actually watches uh, creative broadcasts over on Twitch? just out of curiosity. I think, hi Joni, how are you? Oh, and I will likely again forget the name of this bag because I suck at that, at remembering. I suck at remembering just about anything. <laughs> so, I will likely have to uh, refer back to the bag pattern just for the name of it. And if anybody knows how I can get chat open on my iPad, even though I'm streaming from my desktop, that would be amazing because it doesn't even show, my iPad doesn't even show that I'm live for some reason. Like if I do that, no, that just to, uh, is to put it on the TV. Channel, studio, like, I just want to see my chat. See, it doesn't even show that I'm live. Oh, th wait. Why does it say using that? Oh. oh. So I'm going to pause the video. Now I can see chat. Perfect. Oh, no. Do this, okay, nope, my mic is still good. So can everybody else hear me fine? I may have to turn my mic pack up a little bit. It shows that my mic is working. Okay, okay, good. Good, good, good. And I now have chat. I can see chat over here now, so yay. So I'm just going to continue working on the straps, and I'll show you how I do um, the ends of my straps when I don't have strap ends. And I need to make a little video on this, um, like one of the quick tip things. So what I do and I can actually bring you down a little bit closer. Sorry if I make anybody dizzy there. So I've moved you closer so you can see the end of the strap here. And I'm gonna take a ruler. This is not part of the pattern, so not that big a deal. And I'm gonna use my chalk marker. And just make a line about a half an inch from the end. My ends are not quite even, but I'm not gonna stress that. So I'll do that at both ends. So now what I'm gonna do is pull up the end. And I'm pretty sure I showed this during the Sarah Crossbody tutorial, but you know, it doesn't hurt to repeat things occasionally. So, I'm going over like that. 
and then I'm going to cut over toward the middle. And I'm going to do that to all four edges. I'm just pulling it loose. Cutting right over to the side. So I've made like a little tab here on the end. And I'll run another piece of tape right across the edge there. And of course it's not going to tear where I wanted it to. Not those scissors. I have a bad habit of just grabbing the scissors that are handy and I catch, I try to catch myself every time. I don't think I've cut any paper yet with my fabric scissors. Okay, and then I'm just going to fold this down nice and tight on the corners so that when I fold this in half, we've got a nice finished edge even though we don't have um, the hardware on the end. And like I said, I just don't have any in my inventory right now because the last time I went to order some from Lauren, she was out. Oh, nope, you don't belong there. Let's come loose. There we go. I'm going to move the camera back up now. There we go. So how's everybody doing on this uh, Monday? Mondays are not my favorite. I've started um, making myself, you know, take a little bit of time on the weekends. Um, I did work a little bit this weekend, although it wasn't a lot. because I got excited for a new project. And I do that on occasion. It's like, ooh, shiny. I did even uh, work some on the 110 projects that I was supposed to start cutting out today. So I have myself a schedule set up. I won't tell. <laughs> Uh, I have myself a schedule set up for these projects so that this week is cutting week. All 110 projects will get cut out this week. Next week I will start sewing and I'm going to do it sort of production style. So I will finish one kind of pattern and what I'm doing is like a lot of them I have, I even have everything written down somewhere. I don't know if it's in this planner or the other, it's in the other one. Um, but it's like 10 NCWs, 10 NCW minis, um, and the list goes on. So I'm not going to put a uh, double-sided adhesive on this again. I'm just going to fold it over and put some clips on it. I haven't even threaded my machine. Um, I, I went live a little bit quicker than I planned to because I was trying to figure out how to get everything set up. Um, of course, I'm using the same broadcasting software that I use over on Twitch. Um, so that I knew how to use. It was just the YouTube side of it that it was like, okay, how do I do this? It's all right. So what I'll probably do is take a piece of Peltex, or not Peltex, but um, Decaville, uh, heavy, and cut it at about 7 eighths inch and at each end just to reinforce where my rivets are going to go when I rivet it to the bag. Um, that way, that's some stability there. Uh, because again, this is a little bit thinner than the marine vinyl that I normally use and it does have just the tiniest, tiniest bit of stretch, more on the diagonal. Um, it doesn't have much at all, like it's not obvious, there you go, far enough back. You can see there's a little bit of stretch.
Okay. So the, I think this bag is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful bag. I love the construction. Um, I've watched, I watched Lauren do one. Um, and yeah. So again, this is a first make. It's not intended to be in tutorial. Uh, just like any of the other first make videos on my YouTube channel, they are never meant to be tutorials. If you can use it um, as a reference while you're making yours, that's great. Um, I do often get comments like, it was too fast, I couldn't follow it. Well, it's not really meant to be followed. Um, so if it says first make in the title, it's not meant to be a tutorial. If I post something as a tutorial, it will say that. It will say either a tutorial or let's make. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume to make a tutorial for a bag that I've never made before. <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's just a little cocky. And I try not to be that. I'm really missing my music right now. Because I feel the need to continuously talk. And I don't have that music as backup. <laughs> I wish YouTube had like a music player for live streaming. I know that, uh, well, Twitch does now. It's called Soundtrack or something like that, but I don't think I can use that for YouTube um, and have it be the same. I know that YouTube has music, a music like database type thing that you can add to videos um, without getting a, uh, a copyright claim. I just don't know how that would work for like continuous. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> you do not want me to sing. Especially not with the music and the words to sing with. Now, if I had the music and the words, I sing all the time. Um, but I go a little tone deaf if I don't have somebody to follow along with. <laughs> So if I get quiet, I'm sorry. I'm not usually a very talkative person. I'm the person who uh, says something when they feel the need that it needs to be said, but otherwise they're sort of a silent observer of life. <laughs> Which, you know, I'm fine with. That, and I don't like confrontation. You know? I'm a very non-confrontational person. So, I always worry that I'm going to say something that someone might not agree with and get offended or butthurt over it. Because you know that stuff happens. And I, I don't like to offend. See, and, and I, I feel that way a lot too. I don't mind when someone is streaming and they're a little quiet, but the average person from, you know, analytical data and things like that, they won't continue to watch. <laughs> and I'd like for people to, you know, hang out and chill with us while I'm working. I 
I'm really glad y'all decided to stop in and hang out with me today, though. It, it honestly gives me a reason to stream. When, when people are there, And it keeps me motivated to keep going, if that makes sense. I know there's been times when I've been streaming over on Twitch. And there hasn't been anybody there watching. Or it's only been... Because I don't, I don't look to see who's watching. It's people talking, you know. That keeps me motivated to keep going. But there's been times on Twitch where there's just been nothing. Like, no interaction... And that's the whole reason for live streaming is so that you can interact with your audience. That I've just been, okay, well, nobody's here. I'm talking to myself. It seems a little weird. I'm just going to stop now. And I've just ended my stream. Um, but yeah. It's just one of those things. You might hear like a thump. Or like a metal on wood sound occasionally. My neighbor across the street is a little strange, not going to lie. And he's throwing knives at a board in the yard. All the time. He does it all the time. Like all the time. First thing in the morning all the way up till after we've gone to bed at night. We're going to hear the thunk. Thunk. Across the street. Good, good. So, oh, that was one of the other questions I was asking earlier. If, so I know the video will be, um, I have it set so that it will be live, you know, after, I think it's 24 hours processing after the live stops that the video is, is put up. So, whereas normally my um, first make videos are time lapses, the replay of this live, would you prefer that it stay as is, or would you rather, or would it be okay if it was sped up and turned into a time lapse or edited? I may, you know, download it and edit it down so that it's just mostly me working and there's no voice, add music to it. Which one would you guys prefer? Oh, yeah, he throws them away from the house. Um, my Twitch is also Rogue Stitches. It used to be Lady Crafts, and I'm trying to get to a point where I can switch the name back to that. Just because, you know, that's what I've been since I've been on Twitch, and I changed it, and I thought, you know, Twitch doesn't really go with my rebranding, because it's sort of separate from everything else. So it may change back to that, but it is currently Rogue Stitches. Yeah, I went out to check the mail earlier, and he was just standing there watching me walk toward my mailbox. And I was like, eh, that's a little bit creepy. He only moved in with his parents, like, recently. In the past, like, well, when COVID started. It was after COVID started. A mixture? Okay. 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 Yeah, exactly, Jan. I get a little skeeved out by that. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so those are ready to sew. What I'm going to do is um, cut a couple of pieces of Decaville, and I have some scraps over here. That is Decaville light. That's Decaville. So I'm going to cut a few pieces to go in the ends just to reinforce where the um, rivets will be. And I think I'm going to go with three quarters of an inch. Actually, let's go seven eighths. Excuse me. That way, I can be sure that it'll be caught in the seams. When I sew the sides. This is not part of the pattern. Um, it's just what I'm doing for 
my own peace of mind to know that the straps aren't going to tear loose. And so as I sew, I will insert these in there. So we're going to go over to the machine and uh, I still need to thread it. So I'm going to be all up in the camera view for just a few moments. There we go. So there's those. I still have pink thread in there from the uh, commission that I did. I don't think I showed it in the group. It's on my personal page, but um, I did a pink lady's wallet to go with a bag that a lady bought for her daughter who's starting college um, at the recent vendor event that I was at. So we were there and she was like, mm, I think I kind of want a wallet to match it. And her mom's like, you know what? It's yours. So they ordered it. So I met with them yesterday to drop it off. And they were super excited. I made her an NCW mini to go with it. Why did I just thread that with black thread? <laughs> you know what? Screw it. I'll use the black thread. No, I'm not. I'm going to use um, the dark gray. Certainly not using the pink that's in there currently. And do I need a bobbin? Yes, I do. Again, forgive me for being completely unprepared for it to start. Um, I accidentally started the stream too early. Um, it is what it is, though. I'm just going to set this aside. And get this threaded. Here, let's do this. Give you something to. Oh, okay, that was probably a little much. So you can see at least a little bit of what I'm doing over here. Y'all, this, this threader, or this um, bobbin winder, I was, I'm so not happy. It didn't come with all of its pieces. It falls apart on a regular basis, and I have to put it back together. Go in there, please. It didn't come with any sort of instructions. I don't know if I'm going to need more than one bobbin for this, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do two bobbins. I don't usually like to do that because, unless I'm going to be using um, the same color thread for several projects. Come on. Thank you. Uh, because I'm limited on the amount of bobbins, I need to order some more. So I use my finger. You probably can't see that. Oh, but I use my finger to decide if the bobbin's full enough. Instead of moving this. Because that would just annoy me. Because this thing, the bobbin overfills almost every time. So one more bobbin, and we can get to sewing. But yeah, I'm a little ill prepared. Ill prepared. I will do my best to be a little more prepared next time. You got a great view of my elbow there. <laughs> The bobbin often gets stuck on there, and this whole piece comes undone. Kind of irritating. But that's what happens when I don't listen to people who say, don't order from Gold Star Tools. But 
I've heard some people say their customer service is great. They've never had a problem. Their customer service never responded to me. But anyways, enough of that. Okay, I'm gonna move this back out of the way and grab my bobbin. I already have a bobbin in my hand, literally. Oh, I guess it helps if I put the camera back down here so you can see what the heck is going on. <laughs> And I will do my best not to get my head all up in the view while I'm sewing. Actually. Yeah, I um I got my Juki from them. Um, the table came when it came in, there was there were there was no paperwork. Um, the table itself was broken. Um, I had to put this thing together. So I thought, oh, I'll just order it not assembled and put it together myself and save on the freight cost. Um, that way I can go ahead and buy it rather than having to wait another month to save more money for it. Um, putting it together was nuts. Uh, I had to use several different YouTube videos um, and just <laughs> general common sense to figure out how to put the doggone thing together. Um, and thankfully help from people like Fierce Kittens um, to learn how to adjust like the speed and things like that because uh, it doesn't, doesn't tell you any of that stuff when you get it with no instructions. All right, so I'm going to slip this right in here. And I might trim it down a little bit, yeah, because that's showing. I know that my stitches should catch it, so I'm going to grab my scissors and trim that down just a smidge. Um, there I bought um, this, the bobbin winder. I bought my rivet press. And now I have to order them sometimes, order from them sometimes. Sorry, I hit the cord for the camera. Because... Um, You can't use any other dies with their uh, rivet press. So I'll be sewing an eighth of an inch and then again at a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to use my handy dandy seam guides here just to make sure that people, everything stays nice and straight. Nice long stitch length. And then along the way, I'll just make sure everything stays nice and lined up. I found it unprofessional when, I think his name is David, um, was responding or commenting on other people's posts about his business stuff. I, I just, I'm weird about stuff like that. down just slightly so that it's not sticking out the edge when everything is sewn together. That looks 
good. I am going to go ahead and go down the other side before I come back up at the dog on it. Cooperate with me here. The quarter inch. All right, so now I'm going to hit up the quarter inch mark. And again, I'm going to pop my seam guides on either side of it. And I can put it a little bit closer to the foot this time. Although, my, my eighth of an inch stitch on this side is a little off, so those are pretty close together. They're almost right next to each other, like. Okay, so what I may do is just kind of move this one over and this is gonna get the same treatment. I'm gonna move it just so if it is barely out of reach of the other side, that way just, just so that they they match. I just hit my my zipper tool over there. So I'm not concerned if they're perfect. They're sisters, not twins. I'll move this a little. Ow. That's a little more than a little bit closer. See, now there's my my strap end with no strap hardware that has a nice clean finish so there's no raw edges. So I'll do the same thing to the other strap so that the two rows of stitching are literally right up against each other. Not touching, but they're walking side by side with, side by side without holding hands. There we go. That's the way I meant to put it. <laughs> Ah, those magnets are strong. Okay, so again, I'm going to trim just the slightest bit, like a scant eighth. No, it's more like a sixteenth. Cut about a sixteenth of an inch. I'll go ahead and trim the other one down too. Um, there we go. So now, we'll again insert that into the fold. Make sure I'm at an eighth of an inch here and set my needle. I'm just gonna make sure this is tucked in there and that this is moved over so that it's lined up with an eighth of an inch so that when I put this down, it's gonna be in the right place this time. And hopefully that's not where, um, the, 
the foot will hit the seam guide. These are pretty cheap too. I got these on um, I got these on Amazon. I think I got a pack of five for like six bucks. Squeak, 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 squeak. That's all right. Now, if I were not using a seam guide, I would be going a lot slower just to make sure that my the edge of my material is where it should be and all that jazz. side. So now repeating what we just did, again walking side by side without holding hands. I'm actually going to drop my needle down just to make sure that that is right where it needs to be and that the material is straight. And then pop my seam guide right back on it. side. Uh, first things first is I got to put my presser foot back on because this thing, ever since the screw mishap, if anyone remembers seeing that on TikTok, so my screw here that holds my presser foot in place, I know there was another um, YouTuber that had the same thing happen. Um, it just sheared right off. And I ordered a new screw. It was the wrong screw. Um, the company that I ordered it from, SewingSupplies.com or something like that. I'll have to have to look it up again. Um, they didn't know that there are two different presser foot screws for the DU1181N. They are not the same screw, not the same size. They're same size, but not the same length. So the inner foot, the inner part of the compound foot has a longer screw than the outer part of the compound foot. And they sent me that one. So it was way too long and I couldn't sew with it. So I had to take a Dremel and actually grind off the end of that screw just so that I could sew. And now it's almost like it wasn't the same size or it wasn't the same size that I needed anyway because my foot just after a little while of sewing will fall off and goodness forbid I try to use my zipper foot ain't happening all right strap number two is done um, I'm of course going rogue I have no idea where the straps 
come in play come into play in the, the pattern itself. I'm a little bummed. Okay, that's eh. okay. I feel like at the ends I want to do another short rope. This is probably nuts, but I can see four. Where is my sharpie? My sharpie sucks. <laughs> I have a different one. Here's some of there we go. I'm gonna take this magic marker here and go between the two layers. So it went from from that to that. I'm okay with that. Can't see it on the end, so we're good to go. That is a permanent, um, marker so it's not going to come out and I'm also going to make sure that it's facing the inside of the bag so it will be this way and not this way so looking at the bag from the side you're not going to see that it'll be the nice clean edge okay straps done yes they're a little bowed do I care nope you're not going to be able to tell it once they're on the bag so I'm going to refer back to the pattern real quick and see what I need to do next Okay, yep, nope, done that, I've done that. Okay, so now we're getting ready to actually attach the side panels to the bottom panel. What did I do with the side panels? There's those, aha, the main panels, not side, main. They're called the main panel. Toss this, get it out of my way. Okay, so this is, I think, did I mark, I did not mark the centers of these, and I don't want to fold this. Although they're the same doggone width, so I don't know why I should need to do that. Okay. See, I probably should have waited. So the instructions had me putting the feet on before these are attached. I feel like waiting would have been better. Because it's, it's like, I don't know. It's forcing a depth between the two pieces that I'm not happy with. I need to grab my clips really quickly. I don't know why I'm using clips. I never use clips for something like this. Probably because the pattern specifically said clip in place. And I don't know why I was listening. I never listen to patterns. Anybody who knows me knows that I don't, I don't listen. I go rogue. Hence the name of the channel. That change made perfect sense to me. I'm going to go ahead and place the double-sided adhesive across to the bottom of the other piece as well.
Hi, Pixies. How are you? What you working on? What amazing embroidery have you got going at the moment? I don't know how the hell you do it. Pardon my French for anybody who doesn't like French. <laughs> Now I understand um, putting the center mark because it might be a little bit easier to line this up properly if I had done that. Although it'd be easier if the feet weren't in my way. Okay, so we're going to go over and stitch this. Let me check my seam allowance. Okay, we're going to stitch then top stitch. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I'm about ready to get into Halloween mode too. I've I've done a couple of little things for um for the upcoming vendor event. You've got a vendor event coming up too, don't you? So got chalk on there. Grab my paintbrush to clean that off just so it's not getting on material that it doesn't need to be getting on. October. Okay. That the the Halloween stuff makes even more sense now. My daughter loved her birthday presents. She came over yesterday. And of course, I got to spend time cuddling my granddaughter. Um while she opened her gifts. back to school oh yeah I get those requests too I understand completely um, again I'm gonna reference the pattern really quick I'm gonna keep my hand here so you can see so it has me trimming away part of the seam allowance I'm not really gonna bother to do that So what I do, what I'm going to do, since it's being sewn, actually, no, I'll turn it around this way. Since it's getting sewn, stitched to the bottom, I'm going to make sure I'm stopping periodically to make sure that my seam allowance is pressed toward the bottom. Um, this is Aura Rosa Patterns newest pattern that just came out yesterday, day before yesterday. Um, it is the Monica Carriel bag. And this is the first time I've made it. It is a very large bag. If you haven't seen it, oh my goodness. I'm getting, I'm using some of this um, faux leather marine vinyl. They're calling it marine vinyl. Um, it's not, it doesn't have the same quality as my usual marine vinyl.
but it's still you know pretty good. I've had it in my stash for a hot minute and I've put off using it because it wasn't the quality that I normally look for. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I thought for this project it would be perfect. So I'm going to go over and attach the other side. So now we've got our top stitching. That's also going to help kind of not that the duct tape isn't already doing the job of holding it in place, um, but that's also going to help with it. Okay. Um, this bag is a very large bag. Like, I have no doubt that I'll be able to carry my laptop in it. Sorry, my head is going to be all up in the view for just a moment. And I'm going to look at the side over here to make sure that I have the same distance discrepancy on one side as I did on the other, or on the same side of both sides, if that makes any sense at all, because words are hard. So I had a, on this side, I had a little bit more overhang than on this side. I'm trying to keep that even. There we go. Back over to the machine. And we're going to repeat that on this side. I don't usually use my seam guide for um, my seam like this, but I thought, what the heck, I can be a little more precise today. And I can sew a little more quickly. Okay, I'm going to lift the back up because it's wanting to shift on me, and that's not good. Um, I don't, my sewing table is up against the wall, almost right up against the wall because my sewing space is not that large. So I kind of have to make do, which means manipulating the materials to go where I want them to keep it from screwing up the rest of it. Okay, I'm gonna open this up, move my seam guide out of the way. And I'm going to just roll this up on this side. under here periodically to make sure that that is folded back on the side that I want it on and making sure that my needle is down every time I do that. Y'all the way this bag goes together is just cool as hell. I've never seen construction quite like it and the finished results I'm in love with this bag. And I think it would be a very versatile bag. But you'll see if you haven't already seen it. Okay, back over to the counter. Oh, I almost hit the wrong button there. I'm going to refer to the pattern again really quickly to see what I need to do next.
so I think that I'm going to be making some markings, measuring, make, so look how big that is. I could, I could almost wrap this all the way around my body and I'm not skinny. So like when this is together, you would think that it would be like this big. It's not. This is one of the things about the construction of the bag. Like it's going to lose this much width. Which is kind of cool with the way this thing goes together. Okay, so I'm going to sit this aside because I don't need that at the moment. And I believe these two pieces are the ones that I need. I'm just going to move that out of the way. And again, try not to hit my head on the camera. So I'm going to be stepping away from the counter for a moment to look at the instructions here. Which one is this? I did not write it on there. Did I write it on this one? I did not. So I've got to reference the cut list really quick which I have printed out. So this is, we're supposed to be working on the interior main panel. Okay, that's the small one. Okay. It's this one. Okay. No, that's the big one, huh? <laughs> Interior main panel on the wrong side. Huh? Y'all, I've confused myself. I love, this is Tim Holtz. This is one of Tim Holtz's prints. Isn't it so pretty? That grungy sort of damask and all of the little ephemera pieces that are stuck in here and there. I love it. Love it. And I even fussy cut the side panels for the bag so they both have a bird on it. Although I did end up cutting the top of that bird off. There's, there's one of my hair that's like ironed in between the layers of interfacing. <laughs> Someone's going to take a piece of me with them. If somebody buys it. Okay, where's my piece of paper again? So, interior main panel and bag body exterior. That's these two. So this is the interior main and this is the bag body exterior. So interior main in bag body exterior okay so I have those two marked so that I know which ones which yes that's a ballpoint pen it's within the seam allowance so I don't I don't stress it okay so this says interior main panel on the wrong side of the interior main panel okay let me just read over this section again really quick thank you jan i i am a very picky creative and i'm one of those my own worst critic kind of people um, and yeah because I do a lot of commission work a lot of custom work and um, I'm a picky person myself and the things that I carry and I would never give a client something or submit a client something that I wouldn't myself carry if that makes any sense at all hopefully it does Okay, so 
I'm going to pull out my fabric marking pen, the disappearing ink that never disappears. Actually, no, I'm not, because I ran across my blue, um, I said I did, ah, my Taylor's chalk. So how are you today, Jan? And thank you for stopping in. This is actually, I don't usually go live on YouTube, so you, we're, this is a first for us both. I usually stream over on Twitch. Let's see, that's too far away. I'm going to have to roll this back slightly so that it is actually on that mark. Did I go the right way? Went too far on this end. There we go. Oh, well, thank you. I'm I'm glad that I am I am able to help someone learn. That's actually why I started streaming and making YouTube videos. I started making YouTube videos doing paper crafting years ago. And I got away from it for a while because I was streaming on Twitch. And that was sort of my my platform for a while. And I still stream on Twitch. So, I mean, that's that's not changed. I know what you meant. So, just going to make these lines here that the pattern says to make. I'm going to go on the end and make sure they are ending where they're supposed to end. What did I just do with that Taylor's chalk? It is duct tape. It sure is. I use duct tape in a lot of my um, bag making. Um, and I started doing that because I learned a lot in bag. I didn't start off making bags. I wasn't a bag maker. Um, my first sewing project was clothing and I made my children's clothing for years. Um, and then I got into making, um, wedding and bridesmaids dresses and alterations. Um, I don't do that anymore. Um, and I, I was, um, I actually have my very first NCW video. Um, it was my very first sewing time lapse video. Um, and it was my first wallet like that that I'd ever made. Uh, I, I got into sewing bags by buying thrift store bags and taking them apart and learning how they went together. Um, my most recent pattern that I released, which is the. Um, the Madeline, this is actually one that I've, I'm working on currently, I haven't got the lining put in it yet, um, is based off of a bag that I had roughly 20 years ago. So it's a bit of a retro uh, design. And I started making bags and designing bags um, and following indie patterns because I can tell you there's not a single store-bought pattern that I have ever purchased that is better than the indie patterns that I've purchased since I started sewing bags. Oh, nice. Yeah, so there's there's every single store-bought pattern, like the, the big, big pattern brands. None of them are as good as the indie patterns that I've purchased, ever. They're never that good. And so I, I stick with indie patterns now. I don't even buy store-bought patterns anymore, like the big box brands. Okay, so I think I just need to mark the middle on all four sides. 
And what I'll do is I'll just fold it in half and I'll put my piece of chalk inside and just kind of flick it up. And that puts a little mark right there in the middle. It's not extremely precise, but when I line it up, it's, it's, it'll work. Now see, I have found some indie patterns in like quilt shops and things like that. Those are good. No problem with those. Um, but like the um, McCall's and uh, what are some of the other ones? I actually have one of the first uh, big box patterns that I ever bought in here somewhere. Actually, I think it's in a file folder in my filing cabinet um that you know it's an okay pattern but there's raw edges left inside of pockets and things like that things that your indie designer is going to be a lot better at making sure doesn't happen if that makes sense because we all know that we don't like raw edges in pockets we want to make we want to make a professional looking project and often, more often than not, that I've seen, um, the big box patterns are more for your hobby sewist or something like that. And I, I'm, while this may have started as a hobby, it's my business now. So I like for it to look as professional as possible and last as long as possible. Okay, so that's, that's done. Now, let me double check that. Okay, double checked. Okay. So I was just referring back to the uh, back to the pattern. Found sunny sewing machines in Dallas, Texas, helpful. When I have questions on, yeah. Thank you. I will check that out. I'll do they. Do you know if they ship? Like, or is it just local? Because I'll I will make a note of that. And yeah, actually, I'm going to write that down right now. That's Sunny's, Sunny Sewing, okay. In Dallas. There we go. I will do some double checking and stuff and get that taken care of. Okay, so I need to connect the center marks. And then, okay. Actually, I can do this with my pen because this part, for the most part, is going to get cut away. It's never going to be seen. Perfect. Let me... Great. Okay. Yeah, the one that I got for my machine, I paid way too much for the screw and the shipping. Like the shipping, I paid three times as much for the shipping than I did for the screw. I was not a happy camper. So that is the center line. Even if this pen soaked through, uh, it would not be visible on the outside because this material is going to be against the other material once everything is put together. So I'm not all that concerned about marking these lines in ink. 
Um, I've never tried a friction pin just because I'm too, too cheap to buy one. <laughs> uh, when I've got ballpoint pens handy. These are, I've got these all over the house. Some of which I've been hoarding for years because I'm, I'm a bit of a pen hoarder. Okay, so there's those marks made. That part's done. Oh, so we're a third of the way done with the bag at this point. Okay. So now I have to do the same thing on the other side. Exactly. Use what you got. There's no reason. And I used to, I used to say this um, when I was doing the tutorial videos and the live videos with paper crafting. Is it, you don't have to buy all of these expensive tools and gadgets. If you can afford to and you want to, that's fine. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. But it's not necessary when you're, when you're learning, even years later. I've been sewing for more than 20 years, and there are still tools that I don't have in my sewing room because I just don't find it necessary to spend the money on them. I know, I'm one of those weirdos. So I'm going to mark on the edges. Are there gadgets that I've bought that I didn't really need? Um, absolutely. <laughs> because some gadgets are just so cool that, you know. Okay, from there. Okay, there's so many marks. Is that right? Yeah, now, okay. I will likely be quiet for just a moment because I have to think. And for some reason, you know, I'm at that age where I have to turn down the radio to, to make sure I don't miss my turn as if the radio was affecting my vision. I'm the same way when I'm working, I can't talk and concentrate on a part that I'm going to have to focus on because I will screw it up. <laughs> I feel like I need to mark the center the other way, but it doesn't say to do that. Like, how do I... Okay, doesn't need to be perfect, it says. Good, okay, because it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> All right, so this does need to be only a certain length. And it goes centered, roughly centered, right here. Yes, I'm laughing at myself. I do that quite often. If I didn't laugh at myself, I'd probably end up crying half the time. There we go. Okay, now on the other side. I'm just gonna clip this as the same length. Yep. I told a friend of mine the other day, a friend from high school, she's one of the only ones that I keep regular contact with um, from that many years ago. Um, we were talking about all of the crap going on. 
you know, regardless of what everybody else's opinion is, um, we can still be adults. And while I don't can ever usually get into political conversations um, on my streams or religious conversations on my streams, I'm not ashamed of my beliefs. Um, either way, um, I just don't, I don't want things to turn into a debate. This is supposed to be fun and enjoyable. Um, I believe in being inclusive for everyone. I believe in health care for everyone. I believe everybody has the right to be helpful and earn a living wage and that sort of thing without killing themselves working two and three jobs. Um, and we got into a discussion with somebody else that we go to high school with and it was not a fun situation um, at all. And we were talking about we're going to start a commune for people just to be. You can live there rent free as long as you uh, contribute to the community. <laughs> we were we were joking around, but it was an, an interesting conversation. Have you ever wanted to just get away from all of that and just live? Just live to the best of your ability. Okay. So, bag body exterior, we're going to lay it right side up. That's this one that I have already, um, I did not use Decavil light for this. I used Decavil, which is the heavy. Um, it says you can use two layers of Decavil right for the, uh, the very structured version. Nah, I just stuck some Decavil heavy on there. What are you sorry for, Joni? You got nothing to be sorry for? Not here anyway. Not at all. Okay, so this is going to be the top of the back side because that's the side that will be visible when you're like, when you have your, your bag over your shoulder. I feel like I need to mark the centers of this. No. What time is it? It's 3.34. Um, I guess, but go easy on it. Oh, yeah. It happens. It happens. Um, especially when talking to people that are from where I grew up. You know, middle of the Bible Belt, um, up in everybody's business, very small community, that sort of thing. Me, personally, I'm perfect, perfectly fine with everybody having their own opinions as long as you don't expect everyone else to share your opinions and beliefs. I'm a to-each-his-own kind of person. <laughs> right side up, yep, got that. Sorry, I'm just reading through um, a little bit of the instructions real quick, which is why I'm off the screen. I could just like add my other camera, but when I'm working over at the counter, you'd be looking at my back or my butt when I'm leaned over the counter, and I don't think anybody wants to see that. Yeah, Jan, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I grew up in northern Alabama about two, mi two, uh, two hours from Atlanta. So, yeah. I don't live in the South anymore. I live in Michigan now, so. Not that it's, we have our share of rednecks up here, which is interesting. I've got neighbors down the street that have signs in their yard that say my governor's an idiot because she's trying to keep everybody safe, but I'm not even gonna touch that one. Yep, did that. Exactly. As long as your beliefs aren't hurting someone else, you believe what you want. Yep, don't press it down. Got that. Um...
Okay. All right, so I have rulers here somewhere. I'm going to use my grid mat for the most part. That's not right. That's right. And then, okay. Actually, that's pretty much where it needs to be. Okay. Wow. Like, it's the weirdest thing. Okay, so I grew up in northern Alabama, and we, everybody hunted. Like, when I was in high school, there wasn't a senior, there wasn't a single high school boy that drove, didn't, that drove his truck to school that didn't have a hunting rifle on a gun rack in the back window, right? That was back before all of the issues of school shootings and things like that. So, nowadays, living up here, like, we went to school when we were supposed to go to school, right? We didn't have holidays for hunting. Up here, the opening day of hunting season, school is out. There's no school. It's a holiday. And I thought we were a little nutty about stuff in the South. Shut up. Okay, so we are positioned where we're supposed to be positioned, I think. Something doesn't seem straight here. It's not. Why? I shouldn't have pressed that down when I did. Okay. There we go. I'm good with that. just to make sure that we're staying where we're supposed to. I'm just gonna run this brayer over. Things like this. I used this thing for, and go, this is going back to, uh, this will show you just how scatterbrained I am. Um, this is going back to part of a previous conversation, tools and things. Um, this brayer was, belonged to a friend of my mom's and it was given to her and she gave it to me. Um, it was used for leather working, and for years I used it for paper crafting, and now I'm using it for sewing. Just because. Yep, let me, um, it is the Monica Carry All Bag. Tell you what, let me grab a link to the pattern. really quickly that way I can pop it into chat how about a link please and thank you I'm just trying to find it real quick in the group ah there we go there's her website patterns so this is the Monica carryall And that is the pattern link. Oh, I need to change the, okay. 
why does it say the hardware is here? Oh, I can edit that. Good. Um, I'm just editing the video information. There we go. That fixed it. So now the um, the link for the pattern is in the description of the video. That was, again, first time <laughs> YouTube live sewing. So that's one of those things that I kind of messed up on. Okay, so. Now I get to stitch, woohoo. All right, so I'm going to sew around this rectangle here. This should be fun because this is kind of wide. I'm going to switch the camera view so you can see what's going on over there. Okay. So I'm going to start on this side. Drop my needle right down in there. Reduce my stitch length. I don't sew a lot of cotton materials on this machine, uh, but because this is two layers of cotton and two layers of woven interfacing, I'm not going to stress it so much. I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and end of each of these corners beginning and end at the when I get into each of the corners <laughs> just to keep it from being wonky with this being two layers of the cotton and two layers of the woven and woven interfacing I find that it is just thick enough to keep it from pulling and going all wonky you can see I don't know if you can see I can see right in here that there's like some puckering thing, puckering and things going on, and that's because of the thicknesses of these materials. And the, the this thing just does not like it. Which is why I sew predominantly with um, Vinyl and waterproof canvas for my linings. Vinyl for my exteriors, waterproof canvas for my linings. Yeah, we'll put it that way. So there's no confusion. I know, thank you for bringing that to my attention because I am, uh, I'm still, I'm learning the YouTube thing as far as live goes. Um, I may, uh, I may be going, switching over to YouTube exclusively for my lives. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll do sewing on YouTube, and when I do gaming streams, I'll do those on Twitch, because I am a bit of a, bit of a gamer. I don't play a lot of games, but I do enjoy video games. Yes, old ladies can like video games, too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back over to the counter real quick. And move over to the next step in the instructions, which is to cut out that middle square. Okay. Hmm? I don't want to go on the Xbox. You can go on the Xbox? Thanks. You're such a good ball. Is this is this an all seventeen year old boy thing? Because 
I don't remember my daughters being such goofballs when they were his age. He's my last one. The only kid left. Who else here has kids, grandkids? I have three grandchildren. I may end up putting my brace back on in a minute because my roof is starting to burn again. Mainly because I'm putting pressure on this. Oh, nice. Um, my oldest grandson started his first day of school a little over a week ago in Florida. He's with his dad during the school year this year. Um, and then my, the middle one just turned three. And then I have a four month old granddaughter who just has her first toothy coming in. We're excited. Although mom's not as excited and she can't chew on my, my finger. Any. She doesn't, she won't take a pacifier and she chews on her index finger um, and she likes to chew on my knuckle. And I usually allow it up until now, but that tooth hurts. <laughs> Okay, so the next step, I love sewing on my industrial, but doesn't, yep, yep, I, uh, I don't use cotton as much anymore because my industrial is like my go-to machine. If I used my domestic machines more, or if I had a place where I could keep my domestic out all the time, I just don't have the space in this room for it. Two adult sons and three grandchildren, nice. Girls, boys? Did your, okay, was your sons, were your sons at 17 as weirdly annoying as the odd thing my son just did? <laughs> okay, so cut out the center. Yep, did that, did that. Stitch the hidden pockets. Okay, so um, the I'm going to do this part the way Lauren did, um, which is a little bit different than what it says to do in the pattern. So I'm going to follow Lauren's advice from the tutorial because I think because I'm using cotton and I, even if I were using vinyl on this part like she did, so I'm going to be sewing down this line, across this line, and up the other side. What she did was went down, across, up, and then turned and went over like two stitches and then went around it again just to reinforce that connection because that's a po this will be a pocket right here on both sides. So you're going to be constantly in and out of that and that this point is a, it's a, it's a weak point where they connect. So I'm probably going to do um, the two lines of stitching the way Lauren did and then I may even add a rivet um, at that point. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But let's go over and do that part. Like it's this is the part where this pattern gets really interesting with the construction because I've never seen anything go together quite like this does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the line and then we're going to go inside of that by a, a little over an eighth of an inch. Again, gonna back stitch. I'm just holding my, my material together and sewing right on the line.
I'm going to kind of roll this up over here just so it's not in the way. So I sometimes over on Twitch have done in the past, um, and Pixies can kind of confirm, uh, what I call accountability streams. So I may start doing that here. And what that is, is because I am a master procrastinator um, and regularly procrastinate uh, getting things done that need to get done. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna come over like two stitches So my pocket's going to be a little bit more narrow than it would have been, uh, but I don't mind that. That's actually about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to sew back around. Um, but in the accountability streams, I'm scatterbrained y'all, I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> I just basically do those to make sure that I'm getting the things done that need to get done. Now we're going back over. and then up, and then again, I'll go over at the top of this side. So I may actually um, start doing some more accountability streams, but do them here on YouTube. So that I will just be working and hanging out. Uh, yes, yes, Lauren Mormino. I watched her tutorial for this bag uh, before before I even bought the pattern to decide if it was something that I thought I would enjoy making. Yeah, she's my kind of go-to for, um, between, it's between her and Fierce Kittens. They're kind of my go-tos when it comes to deciding if I want to make something. And Fierce Kittens is the whole reason that I got into, um, making indie patterns. I actually met her on Twitch um, before we sort of became friends. I like to think that we're friends. Okay, let's do the same thing on this side. Yeah, uh, wait till you see, wait till you see how this thing comes together. Have you seen the bag, Pixies? Because when I first saw it, my first thought was, how the hell? <laughs> Which was why I went and looked for the tutorial. So, because of all of this bulk, I don't want it crammed underneath the machine. I'm actually going to sew backwards here instead of forward. And go around that way. Just to keep the bulk out. Um, I do that occasionally, not for long bits of stitching.
Oh yeah. Um, so Fierce Kittens is the designer of the Mighty Messenger bag. So I don't know if you've seen Lauren make that one, um, as well as the Convention Raider. Um, I test her patterns and they are very well written. She works um, one on one and I basically, so she works really closely with her testers to make sure that everything is just right before the pattern is released. And I've sort of patterned my testing after the way she tests hers. Um, I work one-on-one -on -one with my testers throughout the whole process. If, if the consensus with the testers, we all communicate together. Um, if the consensus is that something needs to be changed, it gets changed. It doesn't matter if I didn't want it that way or not. Um, and Fierce Kittens is the same way. She, she puts a lot of effort and heart and dedication into her patterns. She's actually one of the featured channels here on, uh, on YouTube for me. I have her under my featured section. If you look on the right side, um, it will have her and a gentleman named Talk Custom, who are both friends of mine. Um, and I think are very, very good at um, helping people with sewing. So you can see that it's because I've used cotton material here. Um, it's not gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be all that noticeable when things start really going together, but now the pockets are formed. So this will be one of the bag, this is one of the bag pockets. And this is one of the bag pockets. So I'm kind of liking that. It's pretty cool. Okay, so the next step in the pattern. Oh, I didn't transition that, so I've been. <laughs> okay. Yep, thank you, Pixies. I didn't see it. So this is one of the back pockets on this side. And this is the other side pocket. So the main part of the bag will be, actually, will be here. <laughs> And this part will be toward the outside of the bag. I know it doesn't make much sense when looking at this, but it will in just a moment. So I'm going to lay this uh, this way. No, this way for the moment, because I think I remember how the next part goes together. Um, yeah, she does uh, live streams and things over on Twitch. She's been she's a partnered streamer on Twitch. Pattern. Okay, so that's the next step, and then, okay. All right, I think. Okay, so on to this side, I need to make a little squares in the corners. And these squares are very important. So yeah, as far as the, the streaming on YouTube thing, what I may do is just like stream my work day. So if I'm in my studio and I'm working, I'd be streaming. If folks are there watching, they're there watching. Kind of like those 24-hour um, kitten streams. Not that this is ever going to be as interesting as a 24-hour kitten stream. Because <laughs> that's not going to happen. Uh, but... You know, just if I'm working, I'm live. And people can hang out with me. Okay, so this is the interesting part. So I'm going to lay the exterior right side up. 
And then I'm going to lay the lining with the small side up, right? I'm going to, I'm not going to fold that out of the way. I'm going <laughs> to. Oh, that's great, Jan. I'm, I'm, I'm glad because I, I worry about things like that. I do. Um, I need to find the center. Sorry, I hit the camera with my head. I need to find the center. This is a lot of material to be working with at once, so. Excuse um, Just gonna line this up until I get to the center and I can make a mark. Or a snip. A snip is gonna be easier right here. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm trying not to bend Right, Joni? Wait, just wait for it. This pattern, I'm telling you, I gotta remember to hydrate. So I've got, and once I finish getting this little snip, I'm gonna take a second and drink some water. There we go. All right, so water, and then I will continue. It's really hard to be patient with something like that because I literally, until, until I figured out exactly how it was going together, I was just looking at it saying, what the hell, how, just how? <laughs> Patience is not one of my virtues, I can promise that. So, see this hole? Once we sew this edge to this short edge, and this edge to this short edge, and this edge to this short edge, and the same over here, we're gonna turn this whole thing through this hole. And then this piece will be on the outside rather than the inside, and this is gonna form the inner part of the bag. The inner exterior. Ex, the ex, yeah. I think that's the way it's supposed to come out. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I need my clips. They're already over here. So I'm going to do one side and then the other one the way Lauren did rather than clipping the whole thing. I don't think she clipped the whole thing. Nope. Line, 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 line. So I, because I used Decaville, the heavy, not the light, it's going to be a little bit tougher to keep this out of the way. So I'm going to do one side and then I'll do the other side. And so that little box that I drew, I'm only going to sew from the box to the box on the other end. That way when I sew the ends together, it's basically coming together to start with like some weird pillow. That's how I look at it. But I think we're almost halfway done with this bag. I agree, this is an extremely fun pattern. I like learning new things and this is a definitely a learning experience because I've never put anything together before that was quite like this. So, you know, it's uh, one of those things. So we're gonna go over and sew down that side and then we'll come back over and clip the other side in. Ta -da. Remember to transition the camera so you can see what the heck is going on over here. <laughs> All right, again, I'm going to use my scene guide just because I don't normally, but I need to get, I, I want to get in more habit of using it, um, especially for things like this that don't have a 
what I uh, what I would consider like a standard stitch length. I guess it is a standard stitch length. It's just not one that I use often. I guess that's the better way to put it. I'm just going to try to keep everything. This is a lot of material to, like, it's, it's all up in my face. Oh, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to fold this just so that I can make sure, because this is going to take me off here. This is going to be one of those things where, as the gamers say, I would end up rage quitting. And then coming back to it later. Has anybody ever, else ever done that, rage quit while sewing? It's been like, you know what? Screw you. I'm walking away for a bit. I have done that. I agree, Janet. So, do any of you have a, a thing, one particular part of bag making that you can't stand? You absolutely cannot stand it. Because I love to sew them. I like picking the materials. Don't ask me to cut things out very often though, <laughs> unless I have to. Like I want to get to a point in my business where I can hire a cutter. Because I hate cutting. I don't want to cut that shit out. I do it because I have to, because I can't sew unless I cut it out first. So I will feel like my business is more of a success when I reach a point where I can hire someone to cut for me. Yes. Same. Same. I, I just, I don't like cutting it out. It's boring and monotonous. I try to put on some music and kind of chill while I'm doing it. And, and no, it doesn't, doesn't work very well. It's just boring. So now I'm reaching a point where everything's up against the wall back here. So I've got to kind of lift it up. Hopefully it's not in the way. This is why I use so much double-sided tape too. I think I'm going to use double-sided tape on the other side. And then reinforce with clips just to make sure. This is why I use double-sided tape though. Everything stays so nice and neat. But I do use a lot of it. go back over to the counter. Let me switch the view. Now you'll really be able to see how much larger the exterior is than the lining. Excuse me. I don't think it's going to get a little more complicated because I've got the, the stiffness of the bottom to contend with. I have the stiffness of the stabilizer here. Now see, if I had templates for all of them, it wouldn't be quite as bad. The only thing is, I cut a lot out at once. So like, I have the templates for the NCW. So I started cutting out all of the NCWs that I'm going to make using the templates. Um, and so I don't mind it as much with the templates. Um, hopefully, very soon, I will be offering templates for my patterns on my website, um, but I'm not going to be going through tops and bobbins. Um, I had spoke with them about having templates for the Sarah made, and then they just never got back to me. But then again, that was also when they were just getting back into thing, the swing of things with the delays and everything and dealing with COVID. So I'm not, you know, too bothered by the fact that they didn't get back to me just so I'm clear. Um, it's just, I, I don't know. 
I kind of want to work with someone local and uh, my future mother-in-law actually has a Glowforge. I'm just going to put a clip right here in the middle and then mark where the ends are going to be. But uh, we're going to price the acrylic for them and then I'm planning to have her make them for me. And I will sell them directly from my website. There we go. So I've marked that end. And I'm just marking these so that I know where I need to put the double-sided adhesive. There we go. So from there to there. Yeah, um, see that's one of the reasons that I love working with the testers so much is to make sure that my instructions are clear to anyone who picks up the pattern. Um, I've tested for other folks um, who don't listen to their testers. I've tested for folks that I find it odd that they're designing when they don't have the sewing experience to design certain things. When I, as a tester, have to tell you how con how a, cons a construction is done for a particular thing. I it's weird for me that that person is designing. It's like if you, how are you going to design and write the pattern if you don't know how it goes together? But that's just me. Yep, I um, am including, I've also started including um, the projector files with my patterns because a lot of sewers are going to projectors now. And the, um, when I get my other pattern done, it will actually come with the SVG. It's a large bag, but it's going to come with the SVG file for the, um, the side strap, the decorative connector for the strap. Yeah, um, the wallet pattern that I'm working on, um, I've, I had a prototype, but I sold it. Um, at the most recent vendor event, somebody was like, I, I like this and it will work well with my crossbody and I can put my checkbook in it, but it's still really slim, so I would like to buy it. <laughs> like, okay. So I no longer have a prototype, so I can't show you what it would have looked like. But it's a very slim profile wallet, while still be, being large enough to put full bills in. Now there are some patterns that I've started that I've like shared uh, photos of and things like that that I've I've ended up. Being like, no, you know what? I can't. My brain won't let me work on this right now. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go over and stitch down that side. I forgot to put away the dust sleeve for my thread. Okay, now this is this is getting way more awkward to work with. <laughs> but I think it'll be easier since I used the double-sided tape this time. There we go.
Oh yeah, things are not slipping this time. Sorry, I know I've gotten kind of quiet. I'm just trying to maneuver this thing so that it's, it's very large. I have to say though, this bag is, I'm, I'm excited for how it's gonna turn out. Just the look and the feel of the finished product I think is going to be great. It reminds me very much of a professional sort of briefcase style bag. I like it. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the ends. Oh, that's why I was supposed, oh, that's, I did find the middle. Yay. So again, I'm gonna kind of figure out where I have to stop sewing. And put a mark there. just so that I'll know where to put my um, adhesive because I'm gonna use the double-sided tape again because that, that worked really well the first time. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other end too while I'm here. That way we can just get the sewing of this part out of the way and get it turned and all of that jazz. See, that's coming undone. Where's the middle? Dirt is. And again. Exactly, exactly. That's what I thought of. It's like doing a binding on a quilt or something. Okay, so double-sided tape. And that's what it, the inside edges of the book looks, of the book, huh, the bag look like too. It very much reminded me of that. I just think it's a really cool bag. Um, it's very time consuming to make, so I will not be selling these um, at a very cheap price, at a very low price. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to sell it at. Um, but, and I don't know how long I've been live, but I've been pretty much working most of the time. So it's not like I'm just sitting here goofing off, I'm, I'm actually working on it. So I'm starting from the middle, if I can find the middle, there.
right. Now you can kind of see a little bit better how the, what the finished size is going to be like and all of that jazz. My duct tape's coming up a little bit there. Oh, I also need to figure out where I'm going to put my label because I feel like the label is going to have to go on the bag soon before any of this gets closed up. And the neighbor must have taken a lunch break and he's back to throwing that knife. <laughs> so he's the son of the neighbor that's lived there since before we moved in. Like, I guess they've lived there, he's lived there his whole life. Um, and I had never even seen them around before COVID hit. I don't know if they moved in to sort of help take care of the neighbor because he's, he's an older guy, a little eccentric. Okay, so now we're going to sew these. Is coming together. I'm gonna pull the pattern up really quick just to look to make sure that I'm doing everything. I love how she put, okay, so she puts very encouraging little notes inside the pattern in script sort of text. It says, this may seem tricky, it will be fine. Just go slow. She's like, you got this. Yep. I'm just going over a few of the directions really quickly to make sure that I am where I'm supposed to be. Okay. So. I'm going to do this weird sort of curvy thing with this so that I can get at it from this side. Oh boy. So hopefully you can still see what's going on. Actually, I need to kind of push this this way and push that that way. Nope, not there. There. And get the needle right where it's supposed to be. This is going to be fun. Okay. I'm going to remove those. No, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. I guess you can kind of still see what's going on down here. Okay, now this part here, just kind of pressing everything back so that it's not There we go. There's one side. Move those threads back out of the way and then we'll finagle the other side around there. And kind of do the same thing. I 
just make sure that this is up and lined up where it needs to be. And this is back out of the way. Take that all. There we go. So I think mine's going to come out like the more super structured version. Um, in the super structured version, she has you using two layers of Decaville Light. I didn't use Decaville Light at all, except on the end pieces, the side pieces of the bag, um, which I haven't even picked up yet uh, to start working on. So that's the only place that I use two layers of Decaville Light. Um, the rest of the bag I've used Decaville Regular or Heavy, as a lot of people call it. There we go. Okay. Um, because I didn't have any Peltex. So the this this bottom part is actually two layers of Decaville, not the light. Okay, so now, oh, I need to adjust that camera one second because these cameras are not supposed to be autofocusing because it does that weird zoom in and zoom out thing on a regular basis. I'm going to switch it so that I can actually do that. Counter view. Configure autofocus off. There we go. All right, so let me pull up. Wait, what? Okay, did that. Okay. So now we got to align this part. Like this. And clip it on all four. That's my finger. Okay, there's that. How are we doing? Everybody okay? Yep, did that. Oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? I'm just going over the instructions right here to make sure. Okay. 
Okay, so. Where's my small ruler? It's right here. to use the 45 degree line. On the edge of the material. Huh? That's not right, is it? Oh, I guess it is, except I need to shift this back. Oh, okay. So line it up with the edge of the material and with that's not right though, is it? Maybe it's because I got this, the way this is laying. That has me kind of weirdly concerned. No, that's right. Okay. So it needs to be at a 90 degree angle from this edge. Okay. So from the stitching to the edge, and that will be my stitch line. I'm going to go ahead and mark all four corners. I can actually move this clip to here. at 90 degrees from this edge. There we go. I don't know how I thought I was going to cut that thread with a, a pin, but <laughs> that's not quite lined up right. There we go. Ow, I keep pinching my fingers with these clips. It doesn't feel good, by the way. All right, cooperate with me here. There's a lot of weird bulkiness going on here with the Decaville in there. That's kind of annoying me. This is fine. This is fine. It's a make it work situation. As long as I'm 90 degrees from this side, I should be good. That bit there was not exactly perfectly straight, but I'm not going to stress it too much because it should come out in the wash. Okay, we're at 90 degrees there. All right, now we're going to go over and sew the lines that I just marked. So positioning everything might get a little tedious. I'm sorry if I hit the mic oh, while I'm doing this. I'm still trying to 
This is a lot of material to try to finagle and, and uh, work into a position. Can use that. Okay, get this back in here. There we go. There we go, there's a one. This one has just slipped and not lined up properly. Little growing pile of clips over here when I didn't bother to bring the, co the cup back over here <laughs> to put them in. Okay, now the other side, again, kind of wonky getting up in here. I guess that's, that's better this time than before. And last but not least is this corner and then we can trim and turn. It's just going to be when we start really seeing things take shape. Come on. Grab all these clips and get a drink of water. And try not to drop the clips all over the floor. So that's where we're at. I'm going to grab the instructions while I'm drinking some water and read. Okay. Aha. Okay. So now comes the fun part of uh, getting everything situated before we turn it. So we're trimming here. We're trimming there. And there, I'm doing the same thing over here and on all four of the corners.
trying to start far enough back that I'm not catching the my knuckles okay. with my hi I'm stringy. Okay, so that bit is done. Now I'm going to use double-sided tape on the inside of all of my seams to get them folded back. I won't throw these pieces away because these will be good for like zipper tabs or something, and I'm a bit of a hoarder of scraps, so. I'm going to go to McCrackhouse. Really? McCrackhouse? Yeah. You got to go to McCrackhouse? Yeah. Okay. I need to actually like, go to the store and look for Oh, thank you. <laughs> Love you. All right, so I'm going to press open all of my seam allowances. I think this gets pressed back. I'm going to double check. And when I say press open, I don't mean with an iron because, of course, this is mostly vinyl. So it looks like... Flat seam, finger press, taped them down. All right, Jan, enjoy enjoy your dinner. You're very welcome. Maybe we will tape a lot. Yep. <sighs> okay. Yes. So that's pressed away from that. All right, so I'm going to be pressing open all of these seams, um, finger pressing, and then using some double-sided tape on both sides just to adhere it down. And then all of these I'm going to press open this way. And again, using double-sided tape. I'm going to use my wider tape for this because I feel like it'll be um, better. Um, for these particular parts. I think this might be like the longest stream yet. How long have I been live? That's the settings. Analytics. It doesn't say. Stream help is good. So it doesn't tell me how long I've been live. That's interesting. Okay, well, tis what it is. So again, I'm going to finger press open. So we know that this is going to be the corner of the finished bag. And then I still have the stabilizer to go inside that part. Did I cut that? I did. So I have four pieces here. What I will probably do is go ahead and fuse two pieces together before inserting it into this after I turn it. Just kind of pulling that open and then pressing the seam allowance open with my fingers with the phalanges. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. that open. I 
a little slip away that there. So uh, you won't often see. Do you? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, two hours is usually like my limit over on Twitch, unless I'm gaming, because being on my feet for a long amount of time is not um, always great. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, as my grandpa used to say. Um, but today's an okay day. And not to mention, when I'm excited about a project, I find that it's easier for me to be up on my feet longer. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Yeah, I find it's, it's easier to be up on my feet longer if I'm really excited about a project, and I'm excited about this one. So... There's that. All right, so I'm gonna get this, these pieces that I tore off and throw them away. And then I'm gonna move on to folding these bits up all the way around. So I think I'm gonna use my narrower tape on that part. So I think, I think I started talking about, um, you won't often find me working extremely quickly um, when I'm streaming because I do like to take my time. Now, I don't price my bags when I'm selling based on the amount of time that it takes me to make something on stream. I take the time that it takes me, I will actually time myself making something when I have nothing but that bag to make, when all of my focus is strictly on that bag or that project, and my fastest time is what I charge, no matter how long it took me to make a particular bag, if that makes sense. Because, so if I sell one of these, I'm not gonna base it off the time that it took me to make it on stream. I'll probably cut that down by like, I'll take, I'll charge like two thirds of it or something like that, I don't know. This being the first one, typically I keep the first one I make of something. Because it's not often that the first one is completely perfect. Not that any of my bags are completely perfect. But, the first one is usually a learning experience. Sometimes mistakes are made. Um, and I especially like taking my time with the first one. Um, that way I make less mistakes. And then once I've made something, I've, I'm good. The next time I make one of these, I, I will probably not even refer back to the pattern except for specific measurements. But as far as instructions on how to do it, I won't even look at the pattern. So what do y'all think about uh, what I was talking about as far as like work streams when I'm working in the studio, just streaming, not particular projects. It could be multiple projects or something like that. I could be sitting down half the time. It could be project planning, not necessarily just sewing.
I could be working on inventory. Okay. All right, so that is all of that step. So that's where we're at now. That part's done. Oh, see, I love this. This is the first pattern designer I have ever seen do some of the stuff that I do because I'm about to go ro I'm about to go whole hog with the duct tape because she does in her pattern in her pattern. I'm loving it. So this is like coming up in spots. I'm about to fix that. <laughs> She does that in the pattern too, and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I'm actually gonna just, and this is also um, basically like having an extra layer of stabilizer or interfacing. It's good. Oh, see, talk about me going off on tangents. So I was talking earlier about having taken um, bags apart to learn how they went together and that's where I first learned to use duct tape in a bag was I took off I took apart a store-bought bag and behind all of the hardware inside the bag was duct tape it was black duct tape but it was duct tape it wasn't the silver stuff like this which I have I had some black I ran out of it though but yeah the whole thing had duct tape inside. Behind every bit of hardware, reinforcing areas of seams, duct tape. sure that I'm pushing those down but believe it or not she does this in the pattern and I'm loving it so now I know all of these seams are going to stay exactly where I have put them <laughs> oh crap I lost the end But yeah, I've been using duct tape in my bags for a long time as reinforcement for magnetic snaps um, to keep the back of the, the prongs from rubbing against the, the material inside. Um, it's great for that. I don't use, don't typically use Decaville or even um, Peltex uh, behind my snaps. I just use duct tape. That keeps it a low profile and helps protect the fabric. So now I'm going to grab my brayer again. This is also going to help when I insert the um, the stabilizer into the body of the bag, which is going to get put in through this hole once I turn it. Okay, so that's done. All right, yep, it's time to turn it.
Okay. Here we go. Let me poop, move this stuff out of the way. Oh, this is going to be fun. There's one side. Okay, so I'm going to go up in here with my bone folder. Oh, I didn't even have to on that one. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. So I'm using my fingers while I'm holding the bone folder. I'm not using it just yet unless I need it. Don't need it. Look at that beautiful freaking corner. I am a happy camper with that. Okay. I don't think I've ever had corners come together this nicely and perfectly before. Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Now, there's our pockets. So... Okay, I'm just reading over the next bit of directions here. Okay. What about the stabilizer? When does that go in? I guess it does make more sense to put the side panels on before the stabilizer gets inserted into that part. Wait, where's it at? Okay, that goes in almost at the very end. I do want to go ahead and fuse them together now. No, we can wait. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the side panels, which are these beautiful side panels. So I think I want this one. It doesn't really matter which side. I could have sworn I had the centers of these marked. center there. And there. You know what's interesting? I ordered bag corners recently for the first time before this pattern was released and it calls for bag corners. It's optional, but 
It calls for bag corners. I had never ordered these for any of my bags or wallets before. I ordered it to go on a wallet because I was going to change the flap up of the NCW that I made recently. And these are going to be amazing on the corners of this bag. I love it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I still need to decide exactly where... i got stuff falling off the wall here. Exactly where my um, bag label is going to go on this bag. Like, do I put it at, toward the bottom or toward the top? Because I've never done one quite like this. What do you think? Like, toward the bottom front? So, if this is the front of the bag, where would you put it? Maybe the bottom corner? I'm not sure. Hi, Diana. I am making the um, Monica Carryall bag by Aura Rosa Patterns. This is the first one of her, pa her patterns I've ever made and I'm in love with this bag so far. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So this is gonna be the front of the bag. So that would be, center would be right about there. I'm trying to look over my shoulder at the, or on the bottom right. So like up here, if I put it up here, it's going to end up between the handles. Which is fine as well. I don't know. About two inches down top middle. So yeah, right about there. So it'd be right between the handles. Okay. I think I'm going to wait until um, the stabilizer is put on before I do that. Sorry, I have it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, allergies. Okay, so then I think that's a good idea. I don't know, maybe I'll go ahead and do it now. So which one is the front? Is this the front? That's the back. This is the front. Okay. I'm going to kind of press everything flat and at least mark where I'm going to put it. Thank you. Allergies. They're no fun. I'm going to kind of move this closer. So two inches down, might as well use my grid mat. On center, let me grab a plate for it. So the plates that I got in are not the correct ones. They don't fit properly. So I'm trying to dig into my, my stash here and get, um, the last of the old ones that I had. So this is where she's going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put her on. Third one from this side. 
So the straps don't go on till like way toward the end because they get riveted through the layers, which I like. It just adds more um, stability to the strap itself. So that's marked. Now I'm going to grab my duct tape back over here. Because of course I have to stabilize it with some duct tape to protect the material on the inside. So I'm actually going to run my hand up through the bottom until I'm under that spot and then so now that that's stuck down I can actually cut the slits for it and if I can find my seam ripper glue and my pliers because I'm a weirdo. I like to make sure that these are perfectly straight. I don't know what that sound was. I got to investigate a little bit on the, the music thing. Like what music can I have playing during um, YouTube broadcasts? Um, because I like having music playing, but I know that it's a lot different here than it is on Twitch when it comes to music and things. Although, what's confusing to me is how are people able to use or to do covers of songs? Do they have permission from the artist to do a cover of the song? Like, how does that work? Get in there. And what did I do? Okay. I just used that to um, mark out the placement and now I've lost it. Yep, there it is. It tried to hide from me. So I'm going to put the back on this. Um, I think the noise was probably my water bottle. From where I squeezed it. It was that, that sort of sound when the water bottle like pops back out. So now I'm going to, sorry, I know my head is all up in the way, but I'm going to make sure that this is straight. So I need to kind of um, that looks pretty straight to me. So now I'm going to put a piece of duct tape on the back of it. Nope. See, I did it again. I picked up my fabric scissors. I've been doing that a lot lately. I've been so scatterbrained, y'all. Like, bad. Bad scatterbrained. I missed two doctor's appointments just because I completely forgot. And I had reminders set for those things. Okay. Now we have our nice, our pillow here. <laughs> oh, and I gotta say, I love these bags. So far, I love these bag feet that screw in. Um, I wish I didn't, I wish there was less um, headspace. So that I didn't have to create a washer out of Peltex. 
because that's going to create a lump in the bottom of the bag, I feel like. I don't know. Maybe I need to put another piece of something over it. Um, but these feet are really nice. And I can't remember where I got them. I wanted to say it was from Alchemats. I don't know. So I, you know, I don't want to swear by it. But each one, it comes in a, it came in a bag like this. No, or was it Bob and Jen's? I can't remember, but each one comes individually packaged. They are nice weight. I'm really bad about remembering where I get stuff from too. Ooh, I got some of the heat vinyl and the glow in the dark vinyl. Uh, that stuff I'm super, super excited about. Let me grab a roll of this. Is this? Oh yeah. Check this out. Just gonna sit here for just a second. This stuff is awesome. I got the black to pink and the black to white in the 18 inch widths. So those are going to be fun, especially with like Halloween coming up, but I got some cutesy stuff. Okay. So this can be put away because that bit is done. Oh, and I also got some little magnetic snaps in and if I can find a supplier for these I may add them to the shop so the 18 millimeter is what most of us use as a standard right that's the 18 millimeter okay, these bad boys are 10 millimeter you can probably see it better it's either 10 or 12 look how little it is it's so tiny Um, so Angela, normally, uh, normally I do when I use the prong style purse feet. Um, and I, you know what, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and do it with this as well. This is the first time I've ever used the screw in kind. It's almost like a, um, a Chicago screw, but it's the purse feet. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and put duct tape over those. Maybe that'll sort of smooth it out some. Uh, the the heat sensitive vinyl I got from Bob's and Bob and Jen's Odds and Ends. Um, they have a Facebook group and then they have the website. I'll see if I can grab a link for you in just a second. So I'm gonna do that. I'll flip it over to press that down, just so it's. I don't think I'm gonna cut that with the pliers. Do you? I did put five feet on the bottom of this one because. Sorry, I'm going to have my head all up in here uh, because the bottom is so big. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to try them and sort of test them out. Um, I, there is a little bit more space between the screw and the foot itself than what I would prefer. So I did have to create sort of a washer using, de using, um, Peltex. So there's two layers of Peltex between the two, the screw and the two layers of Decoville here, and then the foot on the other side of the vinyl. So there's a lot, a lot going on. A lot of layers there between it. So that's the only thing that I, that I wasn't really happy about. And the screw depth into the, the foot itself, it doesn't screw in very far. So maybe if the foot was a little bit larger so the screw could go deeper, I would feel a little more secure. See, I haven't tried rivet purse feet yet. I wouldn't even know where to get them. Although, um, I could talk to my supplier. Um, I only have one set of one inch D rings and one inch swivel clasps left in the shop. So, and I haven't sold that many of the half inch at all. So I'm going to have to place an order for the one inch with the supplier again. And I still have a ton of the three quarter inch lobster clasps or not. Yeah. 
yeah, three quarter inch lobster clasps, clasps that I got in. So you can see these feet are really small. They're not, not that large at all. I wanted to say the profile is about a quarter of an inch. Not even a quarter of an inch. It's about three-eighths three -eighths of an inch. No, it's just over an eighth of an inch. I don't know why I said three-eighths. So it's like three-sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so I'm not familiar with that particular vendor. Is that a Facebook group vendor or is that like a separate website? Okay, so labels on, feet are on. Now I can start getting the side panels attached. <coughs> Excuse me. So I need to find the center here. I should have marked that before I got started. It's a derpy moment. There we go. And again on the other side. I think I hear the door. My other half just got home. My son's being very quiet though. I wonder if he took him with him. Okay. So, I'm going to match up and clip in place. I did put my clips back over on the other table or on my machine. Yeah, I will definitely look into those. Um, yeah, because that seems like something that I need in my life. So I'm going to... Okay, this is going to have to come this way. This is going to be fun. Trying to sew all of this Like getting the um, bottom of the bag out of the way with the stabilizer. A YouTube channel with tutorials and a Facebook group. She started selling hardware within the last year. So, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in trying them. Um, yeah, I can sympathize with only recently having started sewing or selling hardware. I. Um, I wish I'd waited until I could have offered more styles or more finishes from the start, but I, for some reason, had it in my head that it was a good idea to start small um, and just start with one finish, and as those sold, I would replenish and get more finishes, you know, along the way. Well, it hasn't worked out the way I thought it was going to. <laughs> But, it is what it is. I'm not going to stop selling hardware because I like having it there in the shop available. My deco bill's coming up. I just ironed this earlier. I think you're supposed to like iron it on and let it sit for like 24 hours or something like that, but I'm too impatient. Probably doesn't help that this bottom stabilizer on the bag, like this stuff is in the way. Oh, daggummit. All right, I gotta figure something out here with this. I'm finding it slightly difficult. And this is uh, a couple of layers of Decoville, so it's gonna be all up in the way. And I'm going to kind of clip this back as much as I can. I 
hate folding this. Okay, this should be better work better. There's that side. There we go. I will likely use way more clips here than what is absolutely necessary. I'm very tempted to staple it. Just to make sure that things aren't slipping around because of that. exterior piece getting in the way. Sorry, my train of thought got, got derailed for a moment. Okay. That looks to be eased in there quite well. I'm going to really clip the heck out of these curves. And on the bottom here. Sometimes I'll go back and forth from the side to the bottom just to make sure that things are eased in properly. So that they're lining up nicely. Come on, get in there. And then when it's sitting just right, I sneak up on it with the clips. <laughs> okay. I think I'm ready to sew this. <laughs> Wish me luck. I'm just going to do one side at a time and take my time. Let's transition over to the machine. I'm going to glance at the instructions one more time. Yep, that's done. Okay, that's that part I did right. Good, good. Oh, she staples the curves. Okay. Okay. Y'all, I bought this staple right here, this stapler, specifically for stapling fabric. Get back in there. So I'm stapling just right on the edge of the material. So that I don't run the risk of hitting any of those staples with my, um, my needle. Okay. 
Oh, that's a little too far. There we go. In the same spot. <laughs> Nicely done. Does anybody else give yourself pep talks like that while you're working? Completely sarcasm. You mess up and you're like, good job. Good job. See, I went off the edge of that one. So concerned about being close to the edge that I go off the edge. Good job. <laughs> okay. I think the seam allowance is the same for this part as it has been for the rest of the stuff. But I am going to double check just because... Okay. Okay, yep. So we're good to soap. I'm going to go ahead and use my seam guide again. Back up. Oh, and I also talk to inanimate objects, so don't let it scare you, I promise. There's nobody else here but me in the room, but... <laughs> I like to get up in there with both hands and make sure that everything is staying nice and straight. Because when you remove a clip, then you run the risk of things like that. I don't know if you can see it, but it like moved on me. That's why I like my double-sided tape. You know what? This is just getting in the way. That bottom is also, ow, getting in the way. Aha, there we go. Now I feel a little bit better. way. That is being, there we go. Sorry, again, I get quiet when I'm focusing. For anybody that wasn't here earlier when we had that conversation. Okay, that's one side on. I'm going to trim that down as per the pattern. We'll get the other side situated. I'll go ahead and do the stapling and everything over there at the other, at the counter.
So let me switch our view. There we go. You never know. <laughs> so the staples, of course, won't stay. So I'm going to use my pinking shears. Oh, that's not my pinking shears. I just see an orange handle and grab it. See, scatterbrained. So while trimming down the curve, I'm cutting away the staples. There we go. That's one side done. Now the other. So let me again fold this back. I can just take the clip from over here and move it over here. Just so that it's out of the way. Like that. The only thing that I maybe would have done different was to have brought this stabilizer on the side panels down closer to the seam allowance. But maybe they're not done that way intentionally. And I'll find out soon that that's probably not something that needs to be done. So who's ready for school to start back? I am. Or have you already, your kids already gone back to school? Mine goes back on the 23rd. We typically don't start back to school up here until after Labor Day. Okay, so a few snip, snip, snips into, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put another clip right here. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, ours are requiring masks um, if they're not vaccinated. Um, but on the buses, they have to wear masks regardless. Um, my son goes for his first vaccine tomorrow. And while he's perfectly healthy and all of that, and I normally would respect his wishes not to get the vaccine, um, if he is exposed and hasn't had the vaccine, he will have to quarantine in his room for two weeks, and I will have to wait on him hand and foot. So guess what? He's getting the vaccine. Because I went through that stuff last year when he was exposed. And no thank you. He never got sick. He was perfectly fine the whole time, except for the fact that he couldn't leave his room. He was bored to tears, and I had to put up with it. Not to mention he missed two weeks of school. 
So that also isn't going to happen. Um, they completely excused all of the work that he missed. He never even had to re had to do any of it. But still, I would rather him be in school. Education is important. And I certainly cannot homeschool. I don't have the patience. I was never meant to be a teacher. I'm just gonna go ahead and staple this bit too. Cause why not? There we go. Now let's go over and sew this side. So yeah, I think that's great. How old are your boys again, if you don't mind my asking? I think we've probably had this discussion before, but you know, I'm supposed to get something this week in the mail to see how the school's handling close clothing. Yeah. So I got a letter and I don't know how happy I am about the whole situation. Um, they're going to attempt to maintain social distancing, but other than that, everything is going back to normal. And with Delta spreading the way it is, so it hasn't reached us here. There's been quite a few cases in southern Michigan, but it hasn't been as bad up here yet. Um, and I don't want it to get that bad. So if they're going back to normal operating procedures, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm, I'm baffled. But that is just me. I am of the opinion that everybody's life should matter. Everyone's health should matter. And I know that a lot of people don't share that same opinion. I mean, I was flat out told by a couple of different people on social media that my health wasn't more important than their rights. Well, no, it's not more important, but it's just as important. Um, and when you compare my health to you wearing a mask, your right to not wear a mask, that's not the same thing. I'm vaccinated and I still wear a mask. Yes, that is my choice. Um, but I do it because I don't trust people <laughs> to do what they're supposed to do. Because, you know, they're not going to ask anybody f to present their vaccination card because that's, I think, going a little too far. But when operating on the honor system, I don't trust people to say to be actually vaccinated. I think there are probably a lot of people who are saying, oh yeah, you know, I'm not going to wear my mask and they can't, uh, they can't ask me for a vaccine card or a vaccination card. So they can't prove I'm not vaccinated. I wear my mask and carry my vaccine card attached to my bag, my vaccination card. It's literally attached to the side of my bag. I'm going to go back here slightly, just a little bit, because I'm off of my seam allowance just a bit, because it kept pulling. I take it all very seriously being someone with a compromised immune system and being at high risk. I have plenty of health issues. Um, and that in itself is enough for me to want to be safe. 
and to be around people who want everyone around them to be safe. But that's just my opinion. You know what they say about opinions. Okay. Um, finished trimming down that corner. Let's see. Yeah, see, my other half has chosen not to get vaccinated because he feels that he is healthy enough to not have to worry about it, and I'm fine with that. I'm vaccinated because... The fact that I'm vaccinated allows him to not have to get vaccinated to keep me safe, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to know. It's hard to know. It really is. Okay, so trimming down this side. And then we get to turn it. I'm trying to be very careful. I may have to, nope, I didn't have to pull it out. I thought I was gonna have to take that staple out before I continued around that corner, but it just missed it. That one's gonna have to come out. I have a staple remover here somewhere and I can't find it for the life of me. I probably took it in there to my new shipping area that I've set up and just completely forgot and misplaced it and forgot about it because I do things like that. My uh, shipping area is outside the room. I thought I'd cut into it. I was about to freak out. But yeah, going back to hardware and stuff, I'm really hoping to make the hardware section of my website work and expand the inventory because not just because of COVID and health issues, I can't work for somebody else anymore. My mental health is important to me as well. Oh! And that little thing. <laughs> I'll try it next time. It doesn't, it's, it's thick. It's not like thin or anything. I thought it was just like to hang it up. Okay, so these can come off. And now we can turn it out. Maybe. Sorry, I use my body as leverage when I'm turning these. So there's kind of what the side of the bag will look like. I'm not mad at that. I can't see it though. I. I look over at the camera usually to get a good look at things. Yeah. Well, that's not too shabby. And then we have pocket here and pocket here. I'm not mad at that at all. Okay. So then it's going to zip up and it'll kind of poke out the sides like that. And then that's what it'll look like when it's closed, kind of, sort of. I love the Tim Holtz material with this sort of mottled blue, smoky uh, material. So guys, give me about five minutes. I'm going to set up um, a Be Right Back screen. I need to take a quick bio break. Um,
and I will be right back. at this the pattern again real quick oh I should probably look and make sure that my mic is on it looks like it is good okay so the next step is okay so we're going to do the lining now that works. So the slip pocket. That's an easy one. So I'm going to set this part aside for now with this and grab all of my lining pieces over here. I'm using waterproof canvas so it doesn't have to be um, I don't have to have interfacing or anything. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm, I'm loving this pattern. Um, the only thing that I did not cut was the facing <clears throat> for the zipper. But that's okay. I may just leave it off. I don't know. I'm going to move that out of the way and we're going to do the The pockets. I think this gets like divided into three parts. And 
I'm just going to put a clip on each end here. All right. So what seam allowance? I did not. I think she uses the same as seam allowance for the whole thing, but I want to double check. She does for this part at least. Just gonna make sure that my sides stay nice and even. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking loving it so far. I'm gonna go back over to the counter really quick and I'm gonna pull up the pattern just to make sure. Trim it down, leave the turn hole untrimmed, of course. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down using my pinking shears because they happen to be the first pick that I picked up. Turn it. I should have gone ahead and back stitched when I turned my corners because I, for some reason, occasionally, this seems to be fine. Occasionally it will do that weird thing where it skips, it doesn't skip the stitch, it has a loose corner stitch, which is weird. It's taken forever for me to get my nails this long again. I will not be happy if I break a nail turning this thing. <laughs> this one's already popping loose. I coated them with a poly gel for strength while they were growing. And because both of my thumbnails, my thumbnails break more than any of the other ones because I use them to like when I'm pushing things like this, I'll push it with my thumbnail. Sure. Okay. 
It may look like I'm being extremely rough with this. I promise I'm not. It just looks like it. So I'm going to run this down the edges along that seam to kind of push it out. I'm actually going to get my other bone folder, the one that came with the old Cricut kit, and go in because it has a sharper point, and just try to gently nudge those corners to a nice point. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go over and I'm not happy with that. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm going to go over and top stitch along the folded edge. This is about a five and a half stitch length on the Juki. And I'm just going to continue using that, stain, that same dark gray thread on the inside. Again, I'm going to reference the pattern again one more time. Well, one of probably many times. Because I have some marks and things, some measurements that uh, I probably will not remember. I'm going to turn this in. I'm going to make sure that these seams are rolled out. And I'm going to kind of press them with my bone folder. Just to kind of create a crease there. Um, this waterproof canvas is a lot thicker than the first waterproof canvas that I used. I like it in a way, and some ways it's harder to use. Um, I like that it has more structure than the stuff that I originally used. Now this I need to make sure is lined up nicely before I crease that. There we go. So I need one of my pieces here. And I'm going to go ahead and clip the center on the top and the bottom. Is that clipped or just, okay, it's just written on. Just a tiny little snip. be within the seam allowance. Oh, and I need to grab some pins for this step. That sound was waxed paper. And I can't remember why it's there. Oh, because I was testing, I got 
instead of eau de coat, I bought some of the Heat and Bond liquid vinyl. So I'm doing some tests of this stuff. And seeing how well it, it works. find the center of this. I'm only putting a couple of uh, pins in this just so it doesn't shift around and move. And now I'm going to do the stitch around it. What? No, because it's in the one big pack. Okay, transition, there we go. pull all these out now. Ow, I just stabbed myself with that one. Nope, I could have taken that, that last little bit there. There we go. Everything is caught on the bottom. Over here, I want to run the iron across it real quick. Um, give that a second to warm back up while I'm looking at the other measurements that I need. Because I got a little, a little more wrinkled. I'll test this. All right, I'm actually going to go right across there again, just a step up from the stitch line of stitching that I just did and just across the bottom because that the 
other part is not caught the inner part call it a decorative line of stitching or we can call it a, a I don't know I don't think anybody's gonna look at the bottom of the damn pocket anyway. all right pixies have a good night I may um, go ahead and stop here and then go live not tomorrow but day after tomorrow maybe because it's you know it's dinner time i need to eat you guys probably need to eat um yeah so i think what we'll probably do is go ahead and call it here and then we'll pick it back up in the same spot i won't do any offline um and i'll announce it before i go live this time that way it gives everybody some um so a heads up you know, so I'm going to change the title of this to part one. That's not. There we go. And then the next one is going to be part two. So I will catch you all next time. Have a great night and yeah, enjoy your dinners, everybody.